looking at this one you find out that there's there's the recent version of fabric which you can simply install by just using your sudo apt install fabric yes so using this command you can actually install fabric but from the version of fabric alx want us to use that's this version 1.14 point post one you can actually only install it using your pim your pim command i believe you all know this our pim is a is a python install command that that's uh, the command used to install python packages so that's the pimp command so so that's not that's why if you see from the beginning of the the script let me adjust my screen good that's why from the beginning of the script here you see what they first did was a pimp on install fabric so that in case you have any other version of fabric maybe the most recent one or an older version is going to remove it because this is the version alx want to use in particular or one thought wanted us to use as because all these things you are seeing here that was what they actually used here to to carry out all these things you are seeing so now of course i believe that some of us must have done this you run this you run this you run this till you get to this so probably if you want to install using pim3 let me run this command for instance so that you see what i was trying to say you find out that it will make a, it will complain that this environment is an externally managed environment because most of the times this pimp or this pimp install it works best in a special environment that's when it works most of the times so when you are trying to install it like on a just normal ordinary environment without like doing using a python environment it will always return this error so to overcome this if you check below here you just add this to the installation command so for instance if i want to run this one i will add this one here which is dash dash break dash system dash packages and enter so once i do it you find out that it will run the installation for me see already i already have it on my system that's why showing requirements already satisfied now there's another issue given the fact that i did not make use of my normal sudo uh, apt install right in this case this fabric here will be installed but it will not be installed in the default directory you understand now if we do which fabric you see it's telling us fabric fabric not found right and the reason why it's telling us fabric not found is because of this fabric is not installed in the default install uh, files where applications are being installed for instance if you say which ls okay ls is a let's say which um pwd pwd is still in built which uh let me use cp so now you know most applications are installed in the slash usr slash bin directory even our python interpreter if you say which python 3 you find out that all of them are major mostly they are installed on this part usr slash bin then the name of the package but for this one now because we are we use pimp to install it and not this our usual installation command so we can't find it here it won't be positioned here so that was one of the challenges i had while trying to use the fabric because of i was trying to make use of it but it was not recognizing that the fabric is actually installed so i did some research had to like go on google did one or two search before i realized that the installation part of this is different and because it's different and that particular part where it's being installed is not recognized by the path variable i believe you know environment variable you know if you do env it will bring out it will print out all the environment variable then among the environment variable there's the path now this path anything that have to do with executable you you will find it the path to every executable is included here but the problem is that where this one is now installed is not among this path variable so let me do echo right let me echo just the path itself now you can see the path variable you can see our normal usr slash where is it the one we normally make use of the default one uh 
Where is this thing? Oh? Okay, you can see slash B. You can see slash bin here. You know, we normally search slash bin. You can see slash USR slash bin. You know, we also normally check for slash USR slash bin. So you can see. But now, I now observe that the directory where this one was installed is this directory here dot local slash bin. And by default, this directory is not among the environment part. So what do I do? What I needed to do. Sorry, this is where it was installed. So let me move, let me CD into this place so that you see what I'm trying to say. So I'll use the other side. So if I do CD, LS. Now you can see where it's been installed. Fab. You know, Fab is what you use in running it, the command you use in running it. So you can see where it's been installed. So that's why it's not recognizing it. So what I did was to now pick this one this uh, part and then make sure I add it to the part variable now how do I do that you can do that in two ways one of the ways you can do do it is on your command line directly uh, directly but the problem with doing it on your command line is that once you restart your shell or once you restart your system it will be lost so now to add it here on the part permanently you need to now edit your file, your shell file. For me, I use Z, Z shell, ZSH. For you, it, it will be bash shell. So for ZSH, I just sudo vim and edited the ZSH settings, which is this. This is the configuration file. For bash, if you are using bash, right, it's just bash rc. That's if you are using bash script. In, if your terminal is bash running on bash is the name of that of bash is this your tilde key that's your home slash dot b a s h r c but me i'm using my z shell so i'll use z s h mine is z s h r c so if i enter now it will ask me for password so what i did was now to add it at the end of this script now the reason being that once you start your terminal the first thing that is going to load is this your configuration file so why I included it here is that as this configuration file is loading, it will also export this one. Look at the part, the full part, slash home slash banner. That's in my own case. In your own case, it will be slash home slash, then the username of your system, then slash dot local slash bin. So this is how you add it. What happens here is that it takes the original part and append it to this one. Even though if you don't do like that, if you just do export part and this, all your other part variables will be lost. So what you need to do is to pick, now this one will pick the original part that was there. Then this one will be added. Then column, you know each of the parts are separated by column. If you look at it, if you go back to this place, if you, if you do echo part. So you can see that all the parts are separated by this column. So by doing this command, this one now, this dollar part is just like what we did here but this echo now is just actually to help us display what is stored here so everything here is actually stored here so what we now did was now to add this one column and then bring the rest so that is what is happening here so in your that's what is happening here so in your bash script you can just use this command you can just include this once you include this then for you to see changes immediately what you need to do for you to see changes immediately after you save it you make sure you use sudo if not if you don't use sudo you will not be able to save it save the file so and once you are done you now use source source and then the name of the configuration file enter now the source what the source is going to do is that it's going to reload it so that's the use of the source so i don't know if if anybody if if you guys are okay uh, so that's how I was able to solve the issue of fab not actually working and all that. So I believe that this first place, this where this one is actually a bash script. So we'll skip this one. But if you guys want us to do it together, no problem. After we deal with the main thing, which is our fab, we can come back to this one and look at it together. So just like I said, if you look at some of the materials they give us, right? The materials were not really actually direct, most especially uh, the way they started. 
they are not uh, actually direct so but this is the most important thing now if you are talking about uh, fab fab there are different operations on fabric operations like you have sudo you have put you have get and you have let me use the other hand uh, good this main so let's look at no not this one i think it should be this one yes so you have sudo you have uh get you have local you have now okay let's take it gradually let me let me open my notes uh -huh. so now if if we say we have sudo we have put we have get and then we have local then there's one other one we have run so now sudo local and run they can do the same thing that's anything you use sudo you can actually do achieve it with local you can actually achieve it too with run now what are the differences this is it if you remember you know there are some folders or there are some directories that if you want to run any command if you don't add sudo to it it will not run so in that case that is the situation where this sudo is suitable for instance let's say you want to create a directory in inside your var folder you know that your var is part of root folder so without using uh, super user do or without having the root privilege or without using sudo you know it, you will not be able to create a directory there so in that case you can actually run your sudo command then your local okay let's come to run then your run is when you don't really need elevated permission you don't need the sudo any uh, command you can carry out on your bash that you don't need the run uh, the sudo uh, command that's when you use run you understand but the thing is that even inside your run you can still use sudo for instance let's say i want to create a directory using sudo and i need sudo account uh, permission i can just do sudo a string mkdir let's say the name of the directory is alx alx so this command now will create this directory for me but in a situation where we are using run right and let's say we need sudo we can just include the sudo inside the run like this sudo mkdir alx so sorry let me increase the the size but i will see so you can do this so either you do this sudo mkdir alx or you use this run then the sudo inside but now there's one thing about sudo if you are running sudo you know for some terminals like if you look at when i i i i first of all use sudo here you find out that it first asks me for password for this second time it did not but the first time if you remember it asked me for a password now normally this fabric does not permit commands to be run interactively that's every command you are running it has to be a command that is not interactive and sudo command is interactive and why is why do we say interactive non-interactive sudo is interactive because sometimes when you decide to do sudo it will ask you for a password so that asking for a password it means is expecting you to give in something so that's an interaction already but if like we are creating a directory just without sudo like you don't need to interact just command and it's being carried out so now for something like this using sudo you have to now attach something called pty and then put through now what you're trying to say is that it should convert this sudo to an interactive command it should allow this one to run as an interactive command this pty simply means the p simply means sudo sudo i hope i'm correct oh, i don't i forgot it sudo terminal that's what it means sudo terminal so so that's if you are using this why local now these two can only be run 
on the server. Thus, if you are not connected to a server, these commands will always return error if you are trying to run them. So, you have to connect to a server before you'll be able to run these two commands. Anything, any command you want to run with these two, with run and sudo, you must be connected to a server. But let's say you want to use fabric, but you want to run that command on your machine. Like, you maybe you want to first test it on your machine before thinking of maybe testing it on your server. That's, and since you are testing it on your machine, you don't actually need a connection. So, that's when your local come in. can run on the on your local machine so let's say now i want to run now oh, these two commands you see i put here once you run it using your fabric it will not run on your local machine it will only run on the server you connect t to it you understand so let's say you want to run this on your local machine let's say you want to test it let me check this fabric file is it even working in that case you have to use local so in this case we can use local then let's say sudo mkdir alx so in this case this one now will now run on your local machine successfully on your computer as it is but you see these two if you try to run them on your computer, it will, they will definitely throw an error. But this one will run the command successfully on your device. So that's the major difference between sudo, run, and your local. Then these two, your get and your put. Your put is when you are trying to upload something to your server from your local machine. Then you use put. Normally, how you run the command is you say put then full path to file that's the full path to the file you want to move then slash then this place also full path on remote or server so now once you do this what is going to happen is that it will trace the file on your local machine and then send it to the path on your server that will be indicated here. So that's how your put work. It moves things from your local machine to your server. Then the last one, there are other commands, but these are the most important ones. We have the get. Now how the get works is that you have get, right, full path on server then path on local so this one is just like the reverse of this one this one what am i putting i'm putting this file that is coming from my system to this path that is on my server what is get i am getting this one that is on my server and I'm downloading it or I'm bringing it down to this part of my local system. So that is how get and put works. So uh, I don't know with this brief explanation. I don't know. I, I hope like you guys are okay before we move to actually writing the file. So are we okay? I hope we are okay. <laughs> Me. So are we are we okay? Like, can I proceed? Any question? Yeah, you can proceed. Can oh. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. No problem. So, so now let's look at this first. Uh, okay, before we even okay, no problem, no problem. Before we even look at this this main exercise, before we even jump to this one directly, let's use uh, this file 
and to practicalize one or two of it let's use the what are they calling it ah, why do i used to forget this thing documentation good let's use this documentation to now uh, do one or two things now the problem with this documentation is that in this case if you see they are saying from fabric import connection this one they are actually making use of of the most recent fabric version which is version 2.7 you understand but the one elx want us to use is actually this one where is it is this version here so for us to use this version this is i think this is the use case of this version Are these people so this is the use case of this version where you actually first of all indicate your host in the env dot host and then your username in the env dot user so that is how you indicate your host and your user. So let's create a file. Let's name it filmfabric.py. Remember, is a is a Python uh, file. So and here we are going to do our all these our bin usr slash bin slash m right then python three. So the first thing you do using this ALX version that they gave us is to first import. If you look at it, look at what they say. First, we import the Fabric API. Now, how do you import the Fabric API? From fabric.api import. Now, the reason why they are using star is because they don't really know which and which one they are going to use. Let's say, let's say for instance, what we are sure, we are very confident that the only one we are interested in is to use maybe just local. Maybe we just want to use this local. We can now confidently come and say import local. Let's say we want to just use local, just local and put. We can confidently say import local and put. Let's say we want to use get to as well. We can include get, but in this case, since we are not sure which one we might use and which one we might not use, so it's safe to just use star. So this star now is more like import everything that is inside of this fabric.api. So like, hope you guys are getting. I think somebody unmuted. Hope no no problem. So, so back to this. So this is the first thing. Now the next thing you are going to do is to indicate your username using env.user. So we'll come here and then env.user. Now what is the uh, username of our our server? Is Ubuntu. Then the next one, env.host. Now depending on the number of hosts you have if you have more than one host then you can actually include them in a list you know this python list that's when you have a square bracket yeah. so for me now let me see let me open my my server where is it uh -huh. so since i'm having two two servers what i'm going to do is that i'm going to include the two inside string so this is one comma the second one and then i close it so now what i've done here successfully is that i've actually established a connection with my server by including this one automatically i've established a connection now there are two ways to eat right now if you look at what elx did here where is it what elx did here is that they actually included it from the outside where is it i, I thought i saw something like that good now if you look at what they did here they included it the username from the outside i seen it so there's a way you can also include the both username and then this your host from outside but it's not really advisable so it's best you just include it inside now even this is your private key instead of including it outside 
you can actually include it inside right now to include private key permit me let me check the documentation whether they cover it if they don't cover it it means we just have to search for it and see okay it's not here so permit me to just do a little search so how to include private ssh key in fabric in fabric as a as an environment variable Maji, i used it yesterday and i forgot it <laughs> okay good so this is how you include it this is what you do. so to include it you use m dot key underscore file name so for me now i'm going to use uh the path to my file is actually this dot ssh slash school so that is my own private key good so now the next thing is to start building now, just like I said, using your fabric is more like you coding in Python. The only difference is that you are coding in Python in such a way that you are writing bash script, right? So you can use the, the name of any function of your choice. You must not use uh, like any function. So let's say, for instance, want to create, let's first start by creating a, a folder in this, our local machine. Then we'll now do the one that we'll create on the server and then test it. So now let's say I want to create a folder. I'll say dev. Dev, I'll define uh, I'll say let's maybe create uh, DIR. That's more like create directory. So let me name my function this. And my function, of course, will not take any this thing. So I can leave it like this. This is not taking any parameter. So down here now, what I want to use. Remember, I say let's create it in our on our local machine, right? On this our local machine, not server yet. So because we want to create the folder, we want to create this on our local machine, right? So we we'll just do what we are going to do is that we we'll say we are going to say local local inside bracket mkdir then directory let's say alx and then we are done now we we'll just need to save this file and run the file now how do we save we we'll save the file and then we run it using fab so we we'll use fab flag f now this flag f is more like you are telling it that like run this file let's say okay by default you know i named my file fabric so by default i can just say fab then do you remember the name of the function let's check cat fabric now what is the name of the function we use create dir so we can just say fab then create underscore dir and run it so fatal could not find any fab files remember that okay sorry i made a mistake so actually let's rename it if you want to just use fab and the name of the function you want to run what you do is that you make sure you name the file exactly this name fab file right so i will just rename this one from fabric i was thinking it's fabric to fab file dot py so now let's run fab and our now what did you see you see as you, so you see because i actually added my servers you see it first of all run on the server you got it if it's run on my first server this one now is trying to tell you that it has executed it's now run on my second server right this one too is trying to show that it has executed then mkdi you know say cannot create directory alx files exist so let's check ls now what did you see you see that it has created this file on our local directory and why was he able to create it on our local directory because we indicated using local if we had indicated using either the other uh, run or sudo 
it wouldn't have created it on this uh, local machine. It would have just created it on our server. Now, let's confirm whether truly it has actually created it on our server. So let me SSH into my server. Good. So let me LS. Uh, where can I even go and check? Uh, voila. I don't even give it a path. <laughs> let me see. Find um, ALX. Okay, let me see. CD. So let me check here. ALX, ALX, ALX. Ah, that's serious. This thing is not here. Interesting. That's serious. Okay, no problem. So, normally, just like I said, uh, Vim. So, let's look into the fab files. So, just like I said, this command will create it locally. So, let's assume I want to now create it. I was thinking it's created it on the server, but it actually just created it locally. So, let's want to create this same folder, but this time around, not on my local machine. I want to create another folder, but not on my local machine. Or I want to create it now on my server. So, what I'm going to do here is that I will say, instead of using local, I'll use... Which one? Which command did I even mention again? Run. Uh -huh. I'll say run. Then inside bracket, I'll say maybe sudo mkdir, right? And then I'll give it alx. You know, we checked. There was nothing like alx. Or let's use another different one. School. So let's name it school, right? Let's save our file. And then let's run it. Fab. Then run our function. So do you see what happened? Executing task create dir, and you see what he did is that it actually ran this command on this my first server, which is the 204. Where is it? Uh, which is this first one? Then it now ran it on the second one as well. Why? Because if you remember, I actually stated added the two um, servers on my environment variable. So now let's let me let's come back to this one and check. Now did you see? Did you see that it created a directory school inside of our server? Now, if I log into this my second server, you find out that the same thing has happened. Now, if we check, let's check our machine. You see that on our machine there was nothing like school that was created. So that's the difference between these two command these commands that I just told you. One created it just on the local machine, the other created it just on the server. So you have to take notes uh, of all these things. So so now okay good let's let's use put let's use put now uh, just like what i wanted to say the other time right now in case you don't want to name your file fab file right let's say let me copy it let's say instead of fab file you want to name it uh another name uh, maybe it was even the first name we used we want to name it maybe mk dir dot py yeah. or create create and yeah, let's say create dot py right let's say we want to name it this and want to but want to run it using our fab now the only file that a, a, your fab command can automatically pick up right is any file you name as fab file now any file you don't name as fab file you need to a kind of indicate it using your flag f so in this case, if we say fab, okay, let's even do something, right? Vim create. Let's change the name of this this uh, function. Let's change it to just create underscore d. Now let's try to run fab create underscore d. See what will happen. What did you see? Warning: commands not found. You see what is telling you? Available commands create dir. So it can only pick out. What is actually inside of this one automatically but what is not what is not fab file what is not named fab file you have to indicate it yourself now how do we indicate just like i said use fab flag f right the name of our file what is even the name of our file again i think i used create right dot py now once you do this then the next thing the name of the function you are trying to invoke 
so the name of our function in this factor is actually create underscore d then you enter now you see the reason why it's returning an error is because the file already exists right so now if you are running your, your script let's say you want to run it on your server for you to avoid any kind of error like this let me give you a hint what you are going to do what you do is that in this mkdir you just add flag p to it and then save now once you add flag p to it what is going to happen is that if it finds the file even if the file exists it will not throw an error so do you see what happened despite the fact the file was available but it did not throw an error so so that is just the basic usage of this now just like i said right now we have school on this our server but we don't have school if you check this our local machine you see that there's nothing like school here so now what i want to do let's use get you know we now we just used local we used run of course you can also use sudo yes so so now let's say we want to get this school directory or let's say we want to get this file not let's not even use this school we want to get this file from this our server down to this our local machine now what are we going to do we'll edit any of the file so let me edit this crate now in as much as i can add the command to this create function i want to create another function for it maybe this time around to say get file right name my this thing get file is not taking any this thing then remember what i told you to get something from your server to move something from your server to your local machine you use get now the first one is the part of that in your local machine so let's check pwd you see that this nginx config is under slash home slash ubuntu so we indicate slash home slash ubuntu slash what is the name of the file nginx config so permit me to copy and paste then which part on our local machine do we want to move it to now let me print working directly let me get the part so this is the part we want to move it to copy so let me right let me paste it so this is it so now let's run our command now what we want to do is actually get this file so now what i'm going to do fab this time around i don't want to create a directory i want to actually get now if you remember the command we used what did we say we say get get what look at me i've even forgotten you so what did we use okay we use get file good so get underscore file so let's run our file command now the name of our function want to invoke is get underscore file and then enter so now you see the reason why it's trying you see that it execute the command from the first machine server and it's trying to execute it on the second server is because of i actually indicated both servers in the file so anything that is going to run it will run using both the first and second server so you see that it was trying to get it from the second server but in the second server there was no file like that that's why here you see it's telling you file this already exists and being overwritten something like that so now let's check on this our local machine let's ls now did you see the file did you see nginx so you can see nginx here now on this our local machine right you can see that there's no file like fab file we just have this sorry we just have this this and this now let's move this one from our machine to the server now remember i told you if you are moving something from your machine to the server you use your put so let's re-edit our crate right and then this time around let's add a function to send file so we use dev send file just like i said you can name it anything you can name it anything so in this case since we are sending the file we we'll use put now the first one is the the this thing the file the part of the file on our local machine now this is the part 
to the file. Okay, what do we say we want to even send? Self, we say we want to send fabric, right? Yes, fab file. Sorry, so this is the path to our file on our local machine. Then the file itself is fab file.py. Now, where are we sending it to? This is the location we are sending it to on our server. So we we'll save and then we we'll run our command using fab. Remember the name of our function is send underscore file. So enter. So now you can see that it has sent the file to both servers. So let's check here. Let me ls on my server. So can you see the fab file is now here? So, these are the major commands that you'll be making use of in this particular. There, there are also instances where you delete. You know, your normal, you know, get, post, there's delete. You know, post is simply put. Get is still your get. Delete is your delete. That's when you use your RM command because you are dealing with uh, bash command. So, I don't know. Like, are you guys okay? I I hope it's, it's clear from when we began to uh, this uh, Please, please, can you, sorry, please, can you go back? Okay, okay. I, I was distracted, please, sorry. Okay, no problem. So, at what point? I think from, I don't, are you done with the, um, the file you were editing? Like mm -hmm. the script you were writing? Yes, yes. But, but which, which command did you, did you last left us? You know, we, we tried the, the run, we tried the local first then followed by the run then followed by put and get so yeah i, I think the one where you were using the get okay okay I, I think you were using two functions in the file okay 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 so let me let me go back and explain so so now just like i said this the naming of your function is wholly dependent on you you must know there's no particular way of naming it so now what I want to do now is to actually, you know, get, I told you that get is you are downloading a file from your server to your local machine. So how you do it is that I want to download this file. You give the full path to the file on your server and then you give the full path to where you want to download it to on your local machine. So now on my server, first of all, we downloaded this Nginx config. But now let's download another thing. Now if you check, you find out that we have this also on the server. So I want to download this file on the server. So I'll come and replace this NGI Nginx config with that particular name of file. So I'll, I'll paste it here. So this is the file I want to download. And I want to download it to this because this is where we are presently on my local machine. So this is where I want to download it to, right? So then remember this is the name of our function get file. So it means that's the function that we are going to invoke. So what I'm going to do, I'll call the fab command on it. Then remember I told you that since this is our file, the name is not fab file. You have to always use the flag f name of the file so that the fab can actually the fab uh, can actually find the file. The only file that fab can find automatically on its own is the file that you name fab file. But any other file named by any other name, you have to use this flag f to help the fab find it. Now, what is the function we want to call? We want to actually get file. So we we'll run the get file command and then enter. Now let's see what happens. So you see what it is, it is actually downloading. Good. So now let's check ls. Now what did you see? You see that we now have this file here has now been downloaded to on uh, on this our local machine here. So that is how the this thing the get works. Then for the put, right? Sorry for the send. I say you can send something, right? For the send, that's you can send something from your local machine to your server. 
Now you need to provide the full path to the file on your local machine and then the path on the server which you want to send it to. Now, this is the path you want to send it to. Now, if you ls, you find out that these are the only files here. We have file file, we have this, we have this, we have this. Now, but if you check, you find out that we don't have this crate. We don't have this crate here. So now let's move this crate from this our local machine to our server here. So what I'm going to do, I'll go back to my file. Now, this is the full part to it. Now the name of the file I want to send is create.py. Now I want to put this file into this my this location on my server. So I will save. And then remember what is the name of our function? Let me cut into create and see. The name is send file. So we'll call send file on fab. So send underscore file run. So now let's confirm ls. So did you see? You see that it has sent. You see the previous one, there was no crate. You see now it has sent crate from this our local machine down to this our server. So uh, is there any question? Any question? I don't have any. I think we are all good. Okay, okay. I don't know why the rest are not speaking. So, all the same. Thank you for the feedback.